Hi once again. It's our Sunday message. And today my title is The Path of Peace. So glad you're joining us. What would you say defines your life? Peace or stress? What would your friends say? What would your family say defines your life? Would they say peace or stress? Today we're looking at the path of peace. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you that today we can open your word and consider what you want to say to us. Lord, may our hearts and lives be receptive to you. We want to hear from you, challenge us, stretch us, empower us as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, we read, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is our Prince of Peace. He is the Peace Giver. Peace is not about people or places or a shorter to-do list. Notice he wasn't called the Prince of Convenience or the Prince of Ease. Or the Prince of Comfort. When I hear God's promise that he will give me peace, I translate that into convenience. Or God is promising me an easy ride. God has taught me it's impossible to experience peace. When I am expecting perfection. Our problem is not other people or the place that we are at. Remember, when Jesus was born in a manger, in a stable, and the angel appeared to shepherds. Shepherds were the most unlikely choice to announce the arrival of this baby. He showed up to the least likely people in an unlikely place. Shepherds, they were out in the fields. The problem is, I cannot receive peace because I am expecting perfection. Here's my whole message today, very quickly. The enemy of your peace is not other people or other places. It's not how fast-paced life is. Or the way the world is. The enemy of your peace and my peace is that you insist on perfection and comfort. When heaven came down and appeared to humanity... It was not in the form of perfection. He did not come down looking like a deliverer. He came down looking like a dependent. He arrived as a baby. So when the Prince of Peace came, he didn't come dressed in power but in nappies. Why? Because God wanted you to know He is going to bring you peace. But not like you expected Him to. It's not going to look like how you pictured it. It's not always going to live up to your expectation. The performance of people. So if we are going to live at peace, 
we must surrender our expectation of perfection. Peace is not found, friends, in a place that is problem-free. The key is this. He meets me in the middle of it and brings me peace. He brings his peace. In the middle of the mess and stress, I need to drop my guard and accept the imperfections and embrace his peace that he offers me. God has not removed you from those valleys and hard times. Psalm 23, if you know it, he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley or that place of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We have peace on the path because we are not going it alone. We don't go alone. There is somebody with us, someone with me and someone with you. And that is Almighty God who brings his peace into the situation. He chose a baby, a helpless, dependent, smelly, crying, hungry baby to be the carrier and giver of peace. Babies are not cute all the time. You know it's true. If it was up to me, Jesus should have appeared at the age of 25. Hey, let's get this thing done. No, 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 no. He needed to live life. So he could identify with me and identify with you. The path of peace is a hard place to walk at times. For Jesus, it would lead through Gethsemane. Father, if there's, if there's any other way, then to a hill where he would die at the hands of sinful men so he could be the giver of peace. He had to suffer a very unpeaceful road to get there, which he did not deserve but willingly did it for you. He came in weakness, but died in triumph. Whatever we identify as our source of stress, we think the opposite will bring us peace. So if it's people's demands, we blame them and want them to change. But the road to peace needs to be found with in. Within. Do you remember the message of the angels to the shepherds in Luke 2? They were terrified and this massive angel appears and says, Don't be afraid, settle down, I've got some great news for you. We think the presence of God is always going to make us feel better, make us feel more comfortable. The shepherd's first response was fear and shock. But they found peace through their fear. Luke 2, 14. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. The peace is on earth, but it's not from earth. I don't want a fake plastic peace that comes from people. If peace comes from people, they can take it away. If peace comes from situations, they can change in a minute. I want a peace that the world didn't give me and the world can't take away. Philippians 4, 7. 
and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm walking the road of peace, the path of peace. If your life is in pieces, it won't feel that peaceful. Because your focus becomes the pieces, not on the Father who wants to call him, call to you, come to you, and give you a joy, and give you peace, and give you rest. Peace is not an unreachable place out there somewhere. It's not a one day peace. It's not a someday peace. It's not a somehow, some way, some thing sort of peace. It's the path of peace. Take a step. He is there. Come. Come with a thankful heart. And give God some praise. Bring his peace with you. Because it comes within. Accept it. Embrace it. Walk the path of peace. Every move I make. In every season of my life. God will meet the, me there. And turn the pieces into a peaceful path on which I walk and on which I stand. He is the giver of peace. May God bless you today. Amen.